Let's take a look at some sound waves. Now you might say sound waves are invisible, but if you look at the screen, you'll notice that it's responding to the sound of my voice. You're actually seeing sound waves. They have been represented as pressure versus time on the graph at the top of the screen. We can tell what the frequency of a sound is by looking at the amplitude versus frequency graph at the bottom. If you look at the first tone, you can see that there's a narrow band of energy, or a spike, about halfway between 1500 and 2000 hertz. The second chime produces a spike at just over 2500 hertz, and the third chime has a spike right at 3500 hertz. That is the frequency of the tone. Notice that my voice has very different frequencies. There are more than one frequency at a time, and the frequency that my voice produces depends on the pitch of my voice. If I make a high-pitched noise, you can see the frequency goes up. If I make a lower-pitched noise, you can see the frequency goes down. The frequency is also represented by the number of waves per second. If you look at the amplitude versus time graph at the top, you'll see that the low-pitched noise produces a different number of waves from the high-pitched noise. You can see that the relationship is directly proportional. Low pitch, low frequency, produces fewer waves. High-pitched, high frequency, produces more. Another quantity of sound that we can observe is its loudness or intensity. Watch what happens when I move the chime closer and farther away from the microphone. Far away, close. Far away, close. What happens is that the amount of sound getting to the microphone changes over time. If I am close, a lot of sound gets to the microphone, and we observe that as a change in the amplitude of the sound. When I move the sound farther away from the microphone, less sound gets to the microphone, and the result is less amplitude, less sound intensity. You can't see it on the screen, but I'm holding a tuning fork in my hand. It's about 11 centimeters long, about 4 inches, and it has a very particular frequency. If you look at the frequency display, you can see that it has a frequency about halfway between 0 and 500 hertz. Specifically, it's 256 hertz. This corresponds to the musical note C, or middle C. Next I'm going to try a tuning fork that's smaller. This one is only about 8 centimeters or 3 inches long and it has a very different frequency. You can see that its natural frequency is just above 500 Hertz. This is one octave above middle C. The frequency is 512 Hertz. Now if you listen to the octave you can hear that they are different in terms of the scale and also in terms of their frequency. The relationship in musical terms is an octave. The relationship in mathematical terms is 512 divided by 256, which is about 2 to 1. An octave in music is a 2 to 1 ratio in frequency. The frequency of the sound coming from this tuning fork is 512 hertz. The speed of sound here in the room is 344 meters per second. Please use your relationship between wave speed, wavelength, and frequency to calculate the wavelength of the sounds coming from the tuning fork. The last sound we're going to take a look at today is the sound of a test tube stand being hit with a chime mallet. 
Notice that it sounds very different from the tuning forks or the chimes. That's because this sound is not a single frequency, but a combination of several frequencies. Look at the spikes when the test tube is ringing. You should be able to see one at just over 1000 Hz, another one at about 4000 Hz, another one at almost 7000 Hz, and another one at around 11000 Hz. The combination of these four waves put together is what we call a harmonic overtone. The test tube sounds different from chimes that have the same frequencies because it's a combination of more than one frequency. The chimes sound good. The test tube sounds, well, different. Sounds come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. You can put them together in an infinite variety of ways. Musical composers, for example, use different sounds to express different feelings and emotions. Put together properly, sounds can give you everything from Carlos Santana to Richard Strauss. Thanks for listening.